Fresno Airport in California, and friends and relatives greet the latest plane load of refugees from Indochina. These are special people, the Hmong from Laos. The war may have ended for them 15 years ago, but each month hundreds of these former Chinese mountain tribes people still arrive to embrace a totally alien culture. Fiercely independent, many are reluctant to come, but because they align themselves with America, they're hated in their adopted country of Laos, where they migrated a century ago. Now they have no choice but to take up the promise made to them by the CIA during the war of the 60s and 70s. It was called the Secret War. The United States enlisted the Hmong to fight against the threat of a communist takeover of Laos by the Patit Lao. The CIA funded an army of over 25,000. The promise made was, if you help us and you don't win, we'll take you with us and help you live. They didn't win. Thousands of Hmong died. Thousands were made homeless by American bombing of their villages. Their life was joyless and painful on the edge of the plains. Many followed their general and escaped to Thailand across the Mekong River. It was a hazardous journey at night to avoid patrols. They swam with bamboo sticks on their arms to float. From Thailand, they went on to America. Everyone was crying because we left everything, just left ourselves, and all the things we had, we just left behind. Some people tried to catch the plane, some people just walked from where we lived. All of us were crying and so depressed because we'd never be back or see it again. At the Lao family community offices in Fresno, newly arrived Hmong are attending an orientation seminar. Even learning how to handle Western bus schedules is difficult for a people who have no written language. The word Hmong means free man, but for many their new freedom isn't too obvious. Of the 29,000 Hmong in Fresno, 25% are unemployed and 64% on public assistance. So Washington's promise holds little joy when it clashes with culture. Now they have to learn to think and dream in English. The insecurity felt by the older males is profound. They're rarely seen on the streets, even of the suburbs. For the younger ones, though, the transition to Western culture is much easier. The Minimart is a major leap in cultural tradition for the Hmong people. Most would have known little of markets, let alone market forces in their hillside villages. They're animists, and the spiritual is much more important than the material for them. They're used to sharing rather than buying. Now, in their new environment, their generosity of spirit will be sorely tried. Although many of the Hmong knew nothing of education, some did manage to get to school, even in Laos. Cha Yang, manager of the store, was one. After serving with the CIA-backed army for two years, he returned to school. Now he's part of the Fresno Hmong middle class, but he's still conscious of his roots and concerned for the fading culture. I think the Hmong culture, you know, um, some of, you see, the elder people, they still keep it, but the young generation, I think they forget already. Uh, they go to the Western uh, mystery quickly. So does, that, does that mean that uh, in another generation or so there will be no more Hmong? Uh, that is a hard question. I think, you know, it's up to the parents, it's up to the community to keep, you know, the culture. Uh, as we are, the, we are the, you know, the one, we have to keep the culture. If we don't, then all kids will not have it. It looks like a losing battle, but at least it's a cultural one and little blood will be shed. Had they been born 30 years ago, even at the age of 10, they might have been enlisted to fight against the Patet Lao. Many children did. This is the basis of Hmong culture, working the land. In Fresno, they grow the cherry tomato, sugar pea and squash. But of some 600 families farming here, very few own their own land. Unused to modern equipment, they have a tough time. For hill tribes people, both the terrain and style 
is alien. Back home, the Hmong used what's known as the slash and burn system. There, they torched their fields after harvest, the ashes serving as a primitive fertilizer. They then moved to another area and return after two years. Unfortunately, they also used this system on the hills to clear for their poppy growing, to drastic ecological effect. For many years, the innocent-looking opium poppy was the Hmong's cash crop. Its growth encouraged by both the French and later the Americans to help with the local economy. So for these youngsters, at least part of their culture is best forgotten. The irony is that in a few years, they may well be confronted by the criminal activity that the poppy has spawned. Meanwhile, they are integrating. There are 10 Hmong in this class of 27. Okay, where's Asia? The teacher in this school, where eight out of 10 pupils are Asian, speaks highly of the Hmong children's qualities. I would say that in general, their diligence, their work ethic, um, the parental support, even though the parents cannot help with homework in most cases, just the general support of education. Um, they see education as being very crucial to their future, and they encourage their children in any way they can to do well at school and to do as well as they can. But while the parents encourage the young, many older men feel totally isolated. Former soldiers and farmers, they were respected wise men of their tribes in Laos. Here they feel unwanted and depressed. Some would like to return. Former militiaman Song Dae Ta, nicknamed Beard, says the difficulties of settling in America are the greatest difficulties he's ever had to face. He doesn't know the language, he can't drive, and he complains nobody will take him to the market because he can't understand how to buy. He feels entirely dependent on his children. I'm speaking for myself. One of the difficulties we have in this land is we don't have a house, we don't have land, farm, we don't have English. We have to live under the law. We don't have anything. But in Laos, we have animals. We can live where we want to live. But here it's different. We have such a headache, we are so depressed because we don't have these things. We have no communication. We want to talk to our neighbor, but we cannot talk. Sometimes, we just want to kill ourselves. 